Hello friends, welcome to my lecture on Cauchy integral formula for the derivatives of an analytic function. In this lecture, we shall uh, discuss some important uh, consequences of the Cauchy integral theorem. Uh, first, we discuss a corollary to the theorem which we had proved in our last uh, lecture. Uh, we had uh, there said that if fz is an analytic function in a simply connected domain D and z naught is any fixed point in D, then uh, if you define uh, the function fz as uh, integral over z naught to z fw dw, then uh, we proved that fz is an analytic function in D and moreover that f prime z equal to fz for all z in D. So, now let us prove a, a corollary to that theorem. If z, gz is an analytic function such that g prime z is equal to fz throughout a simply connected domain D, then integral over a to b fz dz equal to gb minus ga for all paths in D which join any two fixed points say a and b in D. Okay. So, now uh, let us uh, consider the function f z as integral over z naught to z f w d w where z naught is a fixed point in D and z is any other point in D then the then the function f z is analytic uh, and moreover that f prime z is equal to f z for all z in D. Now, here we are given that g prime z is equal to f z. So, since f prime z minus g prime z is equal to f z minus f z equal to 0 for all z in D, uh, it follows that f z minus g z g z is equal to a constant in D. is equal to a constant because if f z minus g z is equal to f z minus g z equal to say u uh, x y plus i b x y. Okay. Then we know that uh, since f z and g z are analytic functions in D, so f z minus g z is an analytic function in D and therefore, f prime z minus g prime z that is the derivative of f z minus g z is equal to partial derivative of u with respect to x plus i times partial derivative of b with respect to x. Okay. Now, f prime z minus g prime z is equal to 0. So, f prime z minus g prime z equal to 0 then implies that u x is equal to 0 and b x equal to 0. Now, since uh, u and b uh, satisfy Cauchy Riemann equations, so by C R equations u x is equal to b y and u y equal to minus b x and there hence u uh, x equal to 0 gives b y equal to 0 and u y uh, is equal to 0 because b x is 0. So, thus u x u y b x b y all are 0 in D. Okay, and which implies that u and b are independent of x and y. So, u and b are constant real constants and therefore, uh, f z minus g z is a complex constant. So, f z minus g z is a equal to a constant. And therefore, we can say that uh, uh, f z is equal to some constant plus uh, g z, okay, where c is a 
complex constant. So, this means that the indefinite integral f z of uh, the function f z f, f z ok the indefinite integral f z of the function f z is uh, unique up to a uh, up to an additive constant uh, c ok. Uh, now, hence therefore, integral over a to b uh, f z d z b may write as z naught to b f z d z uh, which will be f as minus integral over uh, z naught to a f z d z f w d w it should be uh, minus Okay. So, integral over a to b f z d z can be written as integral over z naught to b f w d w minus integral over z naught to a f w d w and this quantity is equal to f b. Okay. This integral by our definition of f z is f b and this integral is f a. So, f b minus f a. So, this means that if you uh, have a complex, uh, uh, complex analytic function in a domain d uh, uh, and a and b are any two points in the domain d, you can take any curve joining the points a to b uh, which lies completely inside the simply connected domain d then integral over a to b f z d z can be evaluated by, uh, by uh, uh, the indefinite integral of f z you evaluate the, uh, the value of the indefinite integral at the upper limit that is f b and then you evaluate the value of f z at the lower limit that is f a. So, f b minus f a will give you the uh, value of the desired uh, integral over a to b f z d z. Now, let us uh, consider for example, this problem uh, integral over uh, 1 to i z e to the power z square d z. So, here we can see that uh, let f z be equal to z e to the power z square uh, then uh, obviously, it is an analytic function for all z because it is infinitely differentiable for all z in the complex in C. Okay. So, uh, uh, let us find indefinite integral of f z uh, to find indefinite integral of f z let us put Uh, z square equal to t ok. Then 2 z d z equal to d t or we can say z d z equal to d t by 2. So, integral over z e to the power z square d z will be equal to uh, integral over uh, e to the power t into d t by 2. So, this will be half in t to the power t or half e to the power z square. Okay. So, this is your function f z and then uh, integral over 1 to i z e to the power z square d z will be equal to half e to the power z square uh, 1 to i we are not writing a constant of integration here because constant of integration gets cancelled when you evaluate the definite integral. So, this is 1 by 2 times e to the power i square minus e to the power 1 square iota square is minus 1. So, we get e to the power minus 1 minus e divided by 2. So, we can evaluate the value of the integral uh, uh, of z e to the power z square over 1 to i. Now, similarly, let us consider the case uh, z cos hyperbolic uh, uh, z. Here we are evaluating the value of z cos hyperbolic z from minus i to plus i. Okay. So, uh, what we do is here we will use the uh, uh, formula for integration by parts and integration by parts in the uh, complex uh, plane uh, com for complex analytic functions is also valid. Integral we have integral over a to b f z g dash z d z equal to uh, f z into g z d 
this is the formula for integration by parts we can easily show the validity of this formula uh, here we are assuming that fz and gz are analytic functions in a simply connected domain d and a and b are any two fixed points in the domain d and uh, when we evaluate the uh, integral uh, from a to b we can follow any curve that lies within uh, the uh, simply connected domain d so to prove this uh, let us consider d over dz of fz into gz then this will be equal to uh, fz into g dash z plus f dash z into g z okay or we can say when we integrate we will have integral over a to b so uh, integral over a to b fz g dash z dz plus integral over a to b f dash z into g z d z will be equal to integral of uh, d over d z of f z d z so f z d z which we have to evaluate over a to b so this gives you this formula uh, and r integral over a to b f z g dash z d z equal to uh, f z into g z a to b minus integral over a to b f dash z into g z d z ok. So, let us use this formula here. So, integral uh, z cos hyperbolic z let us take z as first function uh, that is uh, we are taking f as uh, f z as z. So, we can write z into cos hyperbolic z integral of the second function. So, integral of cos hyperbolic z is sin hyperbolic z then we have here minus i 2 plus i minus minus i 2 plus i and then derivative of z is 1 derivative uh, cos hyperbolic z integral is sin hyperbolic z. So, this is equal to uh, we have iota sin hyperbolic iota and then we have uh, minus I, uh, ok. So, minus minus iota sin hyperbolic minus iota ok and then here we have cos hyperbolic z integral of sin hyperbolic z is cos hyperbolic z and we have minus iota and then iota ok. Now, we know that uh, let us see no, recall that sin hyperbolic z is equal to e to the power z uh, minus e to the power minus z by 2 ok. So, uh, sin hyperbolic iota will be equal to uh, or you can say uh, let me write like this uh, if you uh, replace z by minus z here sin hyperbolic minus z will be equal to what? e to the power minus z minus e to the power z divided by 2. So, this means that this is equal to minus sin hyperbolic z. So, sin hyper if sin hyperbolic z is e to the power z minus e to the power minus z by 2 replacing z by minus z we get sin hyperbolic minus z equal to minus sin hyperbolic z and uh, similarly cos hyperbolic z if you uh, write it will be e to the power z plus e to the power minus z by 2. Here when you replace z by minus z there is no change we get e to the power minus z plus e to the power z by 2. So, cos hyperbolic minus z is cos hyperbolic z ok. So, here what we get here uh, i sin iota sin hyperbolic iota minus minus becomes plus here and sin hyperbolic minus i becomes minus i sin hyperbolic by i. So, this is minus i sin hyperbolic i ok. So, this is this and then here what we have cos hyperbolic i minus cos hyperbolic minus i which is equal to cos hyperbolic i ok. So, this cancels with this and this cancels with this and we get the value equal to 0 ok. So, the value of this uh, definite integral uh, is equal to 0 definite integral is equal to 0. Now, let us uh, uh, discuss Cauchy integral formula 
cos integral formula expresses the value of a function you can see this is cos integral formula it expresses the value of a function assumed to be analytic inside and on a simple closed curve c in terms of the value of the function on c okay so you can see we are uh, uh, z not is a point which lies inside c we are getting the value of f at z not when we know the values of f on the curve c okay uh, the curve c we are integrating along the curve c that means the curve c uses the values of the function the function must be known on the curve c so if the function is known on the curve c we can find the values of the function at any point interior to c okay so let fz be analytic in a simply connected domain d and c be any simple closed curve in d then for any point z not inside c we have fz not equal to 1 over 2 pi i integral over c fz over z minus z not dz so let us prove this you can see uh, uh, let us say take any simple uh, domain okay let us say this is a simply connected domain okay uh, so inside the simply connected domain d we have a closed curve simple closed curve c which encloses the point z not z not is a point lying inside c now let us look at the function fz over z minus z not the function fz over z minus z not is analytic everywhere inside and on the curve c except at the point z not because fz is analytic in the whole uh, whole uh, uh, d whole domain d so in particular it is analytic inside and on c okay but because of z minus z not they are in the denominator here uh, the function fz over z minus z not is analytic everywhere inside and on c except at the point z not now what do we do with z not as center let us draw a small circle okay of radius r and radius let us say rho okay this radius is let us say rho okay such that it lies completely inside the simple closed curve c okay then what happens is that we have assumed that the function fz is analytic in d so it is uh, continuous everywhere in d and therefore it is continuous at the point z not now by continuity of the function at z not what happens is that if you take any epsilon greater than 0 you can find a delta such that mod of fz minus fz not is less than epsilon uh, for all z such that mod of z minus z naught is less than delta okay this delta depends on epsilon now what you do the row that you have taken earlier okay this row the radius of the uh, circle uh, gamma this circle gamma okay with center at z naught its radius we have taken as row this row uh, you can take to be less than delta okay so what happens is that then uh, when you take uh, this to be less than delta take take rho to be less than delta then mod of fz minus fz naught will be less than epsilon okay for for the circle uh, gamma okay that is mod of z minus z naught equal to rho because uh, this is a uh, this is a open circular disk with center at z naught and radius uh, delta okay this is an open circular disk and uh, this delta okay and the rho we have to chosen to be less than delta okay so this circle gamma which we have drawn is this okay this circle gamma gamma okay so this circle gamma because for all z which lie inside the uh, circular disk uh, uh, mod of z minus z not less than delta this inequality is valid so this inequality will be valid on the uh, points which uh, lie on gamma okay so mod of fz minus fz naught will be less than epsilon for mod of z minus z naught less than rho we can choose rho to be so small okay that this happens that means we can take rho to be less than delta okay now what we have let us consider the integral uh, of fz over z minus z naught 
on the circle gamma okay on the circle gamma circle gamma i repeat it is mod of z minus z not equal to rho counter clockwise okay so then i can uh, split it into two parts fz minus fz not plus fz not okay integral over gamma uh, fz over z minus z not dz i can write as integral over gamma fz minus fz not plus fz not okay over z minus z not so let us write it in two parts integral over gamma fz minus fz not over z minus z not plus integral over gamma fz not over z minus z not dz now fz not is a constant because z not is a fixed point so fz not being a constant will come outside the integral so we have written it outside the integral so fz not integral over gamma f dz over z minus z not plus integral over gamma fz minus fz not over z minus z not dz now integral over gamma dz over z minus z not we have evaluated this kind of an integral earlier by using the parametric form of the curve circle so gamma is z minus mod of z minus z not equal to rho so we can write gamma in the parametric form z minus z not equal to e to power i theta where 0 is less than or equal to theta less than or equal to 2 pi okay so then this will be changed to 0 to 2 pi dz will be equal to e raised to the power i theta into i d theta so e to the power i theta into i d theta divided by e to the power i theta this will cancel and we will get 2 pi i okay so integral uh, value of the integral is fz not uh, 2 pi fz not uh, value of the integral is 2 pi i so 2 pi i into fz not we have and this is integral is remains the same now we are going to show that since we have to prove that integral over gamma fz dz over z minus z not is equal to 2 pi i fz not we need to prove that the second integral on the right side is equal to 0 so let us consider the second integral on the right we are going to show that second integral on the right has absolute value less than 2 pi epsilon let us see how we get this uh, see uh, uh, we can prove it like this uh, on gamma uh, what we have this this circle gamma on gamma mod of f z minus f z naught is less than epsilon and mod of z minus z naught is equal to rho okay so on gamma uh, mod of f z minus f z naught divided by mod of z minus z naught is less than epsilon over rho okay mod of z minus z naught is equal to rho okay so this is less than epsilon by rho and the length of gamma is equal to 2 pi rho because the uh, center of the circle gamma is at z naught and radius is uh, rho okay so what we will have then mod of integral over gamma fz minus fz naught divided by z minus z naught dz is less than epsilon by rho into length of gamma that is 2 pi rho okay so rho will cancel and we'll get 2 pi epsilon so mod of integral over gamma fz minus fz naught over z minus z naught is less than 2 pi rho now epsilon is arbitrary we can choose it as small as we please and therefore the value of this integral over gamma absolute value can be made arbitrarily small this means that integral over gamma fz minus fz naught okay over z minus z naught dz its value is 0 okay and so integral over gamma fz over z minus z naught dz is equal to 2 pi i into fz naught now let us use the method of deformation of contour okay we can continuously deform we can continuously deform this circle uh, 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 gamma and uh, 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 go to this circle over c 
okay the simple closed curve c simple closed curve so by continuously uh, continuous deformation of uh, uh, this gamma okay we can attain we can uh, uh, achieve uh, the uh, integral over c equal to integral over gamma so by continuous deformation of path because the function fz is analytic in d so we can do this integral over gamma fz over z minus z naught is dz is equal to integral over c fz over z minus z naught we have seen this earlier that the integral remains unchanged okay so 1 over 2 pi i integral over gamma fz over z minus z naught dz is equal to 1 over 2 pi i integral over c f z over z minus z naught d z. We had said that we can continuously deform the curve okay, uh, at until there it uh, I mean if it does not uh, 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 have any uh, similar point on the way. So, there is no similar point in between uh, gamma and c. So, it we can continuously deform gamma and get the integral over gamma f z d z over z minus z naught d z equal to integral over c f z over z minus z naught d z. Now, this is equal to left side is f z naught. So, f z naught is equal to so this is how we prove this uh, Cauchy integral formula. Okay. Now, if it so happens that z naught lies outside the contour okay suppose uh, you have a situation like this suppose fz okay fz is uh, suppose you are evaluating the uh, value of the integral uh, of fz over z minus z naught around this simple closed curve okay around this simple closed curve and z naught point lies here okay you are integrating f z over z naught z minus z naught along this simple closed curve and the point z naught lies outside this uh, uh, simple closed curve c then uh, by Cauchy integral theorem the value of the integral of f z over z minus z naught along c will be equal to 0 because you can consider a simple uh, simply connected domain like this. Okay. So, now f z is analytic in the simply connected domain d c is any simple closed curve which lies in d okay. and uh, uh, it is analytic everywhere inside and on C. So, integral uh, f z over z minus z naught f z over z minus z naught is analytic everywhere inside and on C. So, it is integral over C will be 0 okay, uh, by Cauchy theorem. So, if, if uh, z naught lies outside the simple closed curve C then f z over z minus z naught will have its integral along C equal to 0. Now, let us uh, calculate uh, this integral okay, integral over C e to the power z square over z minus 2 dz, where c is the curve mod of diet. So, let us take this curve first. You can see here, suppose this is complex z plane. Okay. So, this is x axis real I mean real axis and this is my imaginary axis. Okay. So, here we are having the simple closed curve mod of z minus 2 equal to 1, which represents a circle with center at z equal to 2 uh, and radius 1. Okay. So, let us draw this circle. Okay, like this. Okay, so this is a circle with center at two, z equal to two and radius one. 
Okay, now if you look at this function, uh, compare this function with the cos integral formula. Here you notice that f z is equal to e to the power z square and z naught is equal to 2. The cos integral formula is f z naught equal to 1 over 2 pi i integral over c f z dz over z minus z naught. So, let us compare this integral with this integral. Okay. So, can you can see f z equal to e to power z square and z naught is equal to 2. Now, we are evaluating its integral, integral of this curve around the simple closed curve C. This is a simple closed curve because it is a circle and when we do not write the orientation of the curve, we always mean it is anti clockwise. Okay? Unless otherwise stated, we will always mean that the uh, orientation of the simple closed curve is uh, in the positive direction. Okay? So, this is the uh, direction in which we are to integrate and uh, now you can see z equal z, z not equal to 2 this z not equal to 2 lies inside the simple closed curve that is the circle it is at the at the center of the circle. Okay? Therefore, by cos integral formula before cos integral formula we have to check the analyticity of the function f z f z is e to the power z square e to power z square is analytic for all finite z it is uh, analytic in the whole complex plane so in particular it is analytic in, in any simply connected domain d which contains uh, this simple closed curve c that is the circle mod of z minus 2 equal to 1 you can take any simple closed curve okay let us take any let us take uh, any simple closed curve okay any simple closed curve uh, which uh, in uh, contains your uh, uh, circle uh, C mod of z minus 2 equal to 1. So, uh, f z is equal to e power z is square is analytic there and therefore, uh, integral over C e to the power z square d z is upon z minus 2 equal to 2 pi i into f z naught that is f at 2 z naught is 2 here. So, f z is e power z square so 2 pi i into e to the power 2 square. Okay, that means 2 pi i e to the power 4 that is the value of the integral. Now, let us take the other problem mod of z minus i equal to 1 here also we have a circle this time the center of the circle is at z equal to eta and radius is 1. So, let us draw this uh, circle iota means the uh, uh, point z equal to i means 0 1 point 0 1 point means iota is here. Okay. It is in complex z uh, plane z equal to eta means in the Cartesian plane it is 0 1 point. Okay. Now, we take 0 1 r z equal to i as center and radius 1 and draw the circle. So, we get this circle okay. and you can see z equal to 2 is here. Okay. Z equal to 2 this is z equal to 2 this means the point 2 0. Okay. The point 2 0 has its distance from the center 0 1 how much is the distance distance between z equal to i that is 0 1 and 2 0 is equal to under root 2 square plus 1 square. So, this is equal to square root 5 and square root 5 is greater than 1. Okay. So, the uh, radius of the circle which is 1 okay, uh, means that uh, the circle does not enclose the point uh, 2 0 or z equal to 2 and therefore, since z equal to 2 lies outside C okay, by cos integral theorem. the integral over c uh, e to the power z square over z minus 2 d z equal to 0. Okay. C, c is 
mod of z minus i equal to 1 and we are integrating again in the clock anti clockwise direction. Okay. Now, let us do one more uh, example here, let us do the same integral as in the previous example with c as the curve shown below. So, we are again integrating uh, e to power z square over z minus 2, uh, but this time the curve c is different. Let us consider uh, integral over c e to the power z square over z minus 2 dz. Okay. So, we are we are to integrate e to power z square over z minus 2 along c, but c is not a simple closed curve you can see. Let us say suppose we start from here, then we move uh, uh, then we move like this uh, like this. Okay. Let us start from here, we go this way, this way and then this way and then reach here and then we move this way. Uh, we start uh, let me let us start the, like this. Uh, So, let us start from here. Okay. Let we go this way, then this way, then this, then when we reach here, we come this way. Okay. We go this way, this way and then reach here. So, we are moving around the uh, point z equal to 2 twice. Okay. Around the z equal to 2 point we are uh, moving twice, but we are moving in the clockwise direction and then we see that it is not a simple closed curve. This is a closed curve, but it is not a simple closed curve because it intersects itself at the, this point. This point it intersects itself. So, C is not a simple closed curve. So, how to apply the uh, cos integral formula here? What we will do? We will uh, bracket into two parts. Okay. Uh, we will bracket into two parts. First, we will integrate from uh, along the suppose this point is say p okay p q r and then s p okay so integral over c can be written as uh, integral over c e to the power z square uh, over z minus 2 dz can be written as integral over uh, p q r s p p q r s p e to the power z square over z minus 2 dz. Now, you can see from here if we go p q r s p it is a simple closed curve it does not intersect itself and we have reached the initial point. Now, from here we then move this way p e f uh, p ok. So, p e f g let me write. So, then we have the second uh, part as integral over p e f g p. Okay. Now, the curve p q r s p okay, the function uh, e to power z square is analytic in the whole complex plane e to power z square over z minus 2 is uh, analytic everywhere in the complex plane except at the point 2 okay. and p q r s p is a simple closed curve okay. uh, integral over e to power z square over z minus 2 dz then we can find by the cos integral formula, but we notice here that we are moving along the simple closed curve p q r s p in the clockwise direction. So, uh, this will be equal to uh, this will be equal to uh, minus 2 pi i f z naught f z naught means e to the power 2 square z naught is uh, 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 equal to 2 and f z is equal to e to power z square. So, this is e to the power 2 square okay. and then here again when we move from p and f g uh, e f g p this is again a simple closed curve and we are uh, taking a round about the point z equal to 2. So, by cos integral formula this is also equal to minus 2 pi i e to the power 2 square. Okay. So, what we get minus 4 pi i okay, e to the power 2 square this is e to the power 2 square this is also the same, same value we have. So, minus 4 pi i e to the power 4. Okay. Both along both the parts of the curve c 
okay we are moving clockwise so we will put a negative sign so that is why uh, we get the value this minus 4 pi i e to the power 4 so this is how we do this problem where we uh, took uh, took c to be any uh, closed curve which is not simple closed now let us consider uh, the, uh, the theorem which uh, uh, tells us that if fz is an analytic function then all other derivatives of fz are also analytic now this result is very important uh, uh, if you see it compare it with the uh, corresponding result in uh, real analysis there if fz is if a function by equal to fx is differentiable we cannot say anything about the uh, existence of the uh, second order derivative but here uh, the if the function fz is analytic okay if fz is differentiable in some domain all ordered derivatives of fz are also differentiable all ordered derivatives of fz are, are are analytic that means all ordered derivatives of fz exist and are therefore analytic functions so this way uh, the function complex analytic functions we have in a very simple manner then the uh, as far as the derivatives are concerned uh, compared to their uh, counterparts in real analysis. So, uh, if fz is analytic in a simply connected domain D, it possesses derivatives of all orders in D. This result we had used when we proved the uh, fact that uh, the real and imaginary parts of an analytic functions are analytic function are uh, harmonic functions. There we had said that later on we will prove that if fz is analytic in D then all other derivatives of fz are also analytic and uh, so fz is infinitely differentiable and therefore the real and imaginary parts u x y and v x y of fz are uh, continuous okay second order partial derivatives of f, uh, uh, of fz second order partial derivatives of u x y and v x y are continuous and that is why the mixed derivatives uh, u x y and u y x are equal equal okay and so we were able to prove that uh, u is a solution of the laplace equation so this result that result we had uh, this result we had used that time now we are going to prove it so if fz is analytic in a simply connected domain d it possesses derivatives of all orders in d which are also analytic functions in d the values of these derivatives at any point z not in d are given by f n z not this is another derivative f n z not equal to n factorial by 2 pi i integral over c fz over z minus z not to the power n plus 1 dz where n takes values 1 2 and so on now c is any simple closed curve lying wholly in d and encloses the point z not the curve c being traversed in the counter clock by sign so so you let me say so, suppose your domain is like this okay this is your domain d and uh, this is your point z not okay c is any simple closed curve okay uh, which encloses z not and lies completely inside d okay and we are moving along c in the counter clock by direction okay now let us take a point uh, z not plus delta z inside c okay in a neighborhood of z not so let us take a point z not plus delta z here let us take a point z not plus delta z in a neighborhood of z not inside c okay then we can apply cos integral formula cos integral formula uh, when we apply uh, we get the value of f at z not plus delta z equal to 1 over 2 pi i integral over c f z over z minus z not minus delta z dz okay and when we apply cos integral formula uh, for f at the point z not we get f z not equal to 1 over 2 pi i integral over c f z over z minus z not dz now let us subtract uh, the second equation from first equation. So, f z naught plus delta z minus f z naught over delta z equal to 1 over 2 pi i integral over c f z and then 1 over z minus z naught minus delta z minus 1 over z minus z naught delta z. Now, this expression, this expression we can write in this manner, you can verify that they are equal uh, 1 over delta z we are multiplying this expression by 1 over delta z so 1 over delta z 1 over z minus z naught minus delta z minus 1 over z minus z naught this expression inside the curly bracket multiplied by 1 over z a delta z is equal to uh, 1 over z minus z naught whole square plus delta z divided by z minus z naught minus delta z into z minus z naught whole square so, we are we are writing this expression inside the curly bracket in a particular form because we want to prove uh, 
the uh, uh, cos integral formula this one for n equal to 1 and when you put n equal to 1 here f prime z naught you get f prime z naught is 1 factorial over 2 pi i that is 1 over 2 pi i integral over c f z over z minus z naught whole square dz. So, the right side here we are trying to bring uh, in the form integral over c f z over z minus z naught whole square that is why we have written this as 1 over z minus z naught whole square. Now, let us replace this value here. Okay. So, when we, when we put this value there what we get and take the limit as delta z tends to 0. Okay. So, uh, when we take the limit as delta z tends to 0 this gives you f prime z naught. So, f prime z naught is equal to f z naught plus delta z minus f z naught over delta z which is equal to 1 over 2 pi i integral over c f z over z minus z naught whole square dz plus limit delta z tends to 0 delta z over 2 pi i. So, uh, this is limit delta z tends to 0 delta z over 2 pi i integral over c f z over z minus z naught minus delta z dz. Okay. Now, f prime z naught is equal to this we want to prove that f prime z naught is equal to this value this means we have to show that this value is 0. Okay. So, let us now show that the second expression on the right side this is second expression on the right side it has value 0. So, since f z is analytic inside uh, in D uh, it is analytic in, uh, in inside and on C okay. in particular f z is continuous on C. So, since f z is continuous on C it is a uh, bounded uh, quantity on C its absolute value uh, mod of f z is less than or equal to some constant m on c. Okay. So, therefore, we can find a constant m such that mod of f z is less than or equal to m for all z on c. Now, let us say that delta be the distance of z naught from the nearest point z on c. Okay. So, what we have suppose this is your uh, domain d and this is your simple closed curve okay, uh, c z naught is some point here. Okay. So, then we are taking delta to be the minimum value of mod of z minus z naught okay, uh, where z belongs to c. Okay. So, delta is the uh, distance of z naught from the point z on c uh, which is nearest to z naught. Okay. So, minimum of mod of z minus z naught z belonging to c and l be the length of c. So, this means that mod of z minus z naught will be greater than or equal to delta for all z belonging to c okay. and l is the length of c. Okay. Then what we have uh, uh, let us choose our delta z uh, to be uh, smaller than mod of delta z to be smaller than this delta y 2 this delta is the minimum of uh, the minimum uh, the shortest length uh, between uh, the uh, a distance of the point z naught from the nearest point on the boundary of c. Okay. So, mod of delta z let us take to be less than delta by 2 then what we will get mod of z minus z naught minus delta z. Okay. Let us calculate this mod of z minus z naught minus delta z this is greater than or equal to mod of z minus z naught minus mod of delta z. Now, z belongs to z is moving along the curve c. So, mod of z minus z naught is greater than or equal to delta and mod of delta z is uh, less than delta by 2. So, this is delta by 2 here you can put a negative sign here as you can put a greater than sign here. Uh, uh, so, uh, this is greater than delta minus delta by 2. So, this is delta by 2. So, uh, what we can say uh, uh, mod of f z divided by z minus z naught whole square into z minus z naught minus delta z mod of this is less than or equal to mod of f z is less than or equal to m on c mod of z minus z naught is, is like greater than or equal to delta. Okay. So, this is delta is square and then we have mod of z minus z naught minus delta z which is greater than uh, delta y 2. So, this is into delta y 2. So, let us uh, write it as uh, less than here. Okay. So, then this is equal to 2 m by delta q okay. and uh, l is the length of c. So, we can write here uh, maximum value of r 
estimate of mod of fz over z minus z naught whole square uh, into z minus z naught minus delta z the modulus of this quantity integrand is less than uh, or equal to 2m by delta cube and length of c is l so we have 2ml by delta cube okay now uh, this from this what do we notice uh, we have to calculate uh, this th we have to show this goes to zero okay so let us consider mod of delta z by 2 pi i okay integral over c uh, fz dz divided by z minus z naught whole square into z minus z naught minus delta z okay mod of this this is less than or equal to uh, mod of delta z divided by 2 pi i oh sorry uh, mod we have used so this will be uh, mod of delta z divided by uh, 2 pi into 2 ml by delta q okay so this cancels with this and we get uh, uh, ml times mod of delta z divided by pi delta q and this quantity goes to 0 as delta goes to 0. So, as delta goes to 0 okay, uh, this quantity goes to 0 and so limit delta z tends to 0 delta z over 2 pi i fz over z minus z naught whole square uh, into z minus z naught minus delta z dz is equal to 0. Uh, so, uh, this quantity becomes 0 and what we have is then uh, uh, so this formula okay so then we have f prime z naught equal to this quantity okay so this means that the formula holds for n equal to 1 okay following the uh, following this proof okay uh, we can similarly prove for n equal to 2 okay uh, so uh, on using the formula for n equal to 1 we can similarly prove for n equal to 2 we have earlier used uh, this value uh, that is fz naught equal to this fz naught plus delta z equal to this now you use this uh, formula for f prime z okay so write f prime z naught plus delta z and f prime z naught and then divide f prime z naught plus delta z minus f prime z naught over delta z uh, uh, consider over delta z and take delta z tends to 0 you get f double prime z naught. So, we can get the similar uh, 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 same proof we have for n equal to 2. Okay. So, on using the formula for n equal to 1 we can similarly prove for n equal to 2 and then general formula follows by induction. Okay. Now, let us consider this uh, integral i equal to integral e to power 2 z over z to the power 4. So, let us compare it with this formula f n z naught equal to 1 over 2 uh, n factorial over 2 pi i integral over c f z d z over z minus z naught to the power 4 or uh, z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 where n takes values 1 2 3 and so on ok. So, here uh, we have uh, if you compare this integral with this integral we have f z equal to e to the power 2 z ok and z naught is equal to 0 and n is equal to 3 alright. Now, let us see the curve along which we have to integrate the curve c is mod of z equal to 1 this means that the center of the circle is at 0 z equal to 0 and radius is 1. So, we are considering unit circle mod z equal to 1 this center is z equal to 0 and radius is 1 ok and this is your uh, z plane ok real axis imaginary axis this is mod so this is unit circle ok unit circle. Now, f z equal to e to the power z is analytic for all z ok and uh, so it is analytic in any simply connected domain you can consider which uh, contains mod z equal to 1 ok mod z equal to 1 is a simple closed curve ok it is a circle so it is a simple closed curve. Uh, so, we are moving along the simple closed curve in the counter clockwise direction and therefore, uh, if you follow this formula we have integral over c uh, e to the power 2 z over z to the power 4 d z will be equal to uh, 2 pi i take n equal to 3. So, uh, 3 factorial 
and then f triple prime okay z not z not is 0 okay now f z is e to the power 2 z so you can find it derivative f prime z it is 2 times e to the power 2 z then f double prime z so 2 square e to the power 2 z and then f triple prime so it is 2 cube e to the power 2 z Okay, so this will be equal to 2 pi i y 6, uh, 2 to the power 3 means 8 e to the power 2 z at z equal to 0. Okay, at z equal to 0 e to the power 2 z is uh, 1, so we have uh, 16 pi i over 6, which is equal to 8 pi i over 3. Okay, so this is the value of the given integral okay now let's see with the contour shown below and evaluate the same integral as in the previous example now you can see here this is z equal to 0 okay and we are getting uh, uh, i equal to integral over c e to the power 2 z over z to the power 4 so i equal to e integral over c e to the power 2 z over z to the power 4 dz okay C is a simple closed curve here. Okay, we are going along the simple closed curve C. Okay, the function e to power two z is analytic in the whole complex plane. So we can apply the formula, and this is uh, 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 two pi i by three factorial. Okay, e, and then d cube over d z cube of e to the power two z at z equal to zero. So, it will be same uh, we get 2 pi i by 6 and we get 2 cube e to the power 2 z at z equal to 0. So, this is 2 pi i by 6 and we had 8 ok e power 0 is 1. So, we get uh, 8 pi i by 3 ok. So, we get the same value uh, here uh, because the curve c is a simple closed curve which encloses z equal to 0 and uh, f z equal to e to power 2 z as we have know is analytic in the whole complex plane. So, this is how we evaluate uh, this uh, integral uh, with the, this I would like to end my lecture. Thank you very much for your attention.